What has been the best who's laughing now moment of your life so far? My husband asked me why that tar company Michelin gives out stars to restaurants. I laughed and told him it was cute how he actually thought the tire company and the restaurant rating people were the same company. For about a week I kept rubbing it in his face. My husband the poor fool. One night he gets fed up and googles the dang thing. A minute later he's holding the phone in my face. It is the same company and I'm the ignorant twit after all. He rubs it in my face at least once a week. But why do tire people rate food? Grew up doing construction with my dad. Who would yell anytime I wasn't actively moving my body to work. He'd always say you don't get paid to watch other people work well now I'm grown up and film construction renovation shows for a living. I literally get paid to watch other people work. Take that dad. Sounds a lot like my summer gig. My dad told me I couldn't just sit around all day. Became a lifeguard and got paid to sit around all day. My mom's boyfriend died when I was 14. It was my first experience with death and I had a hard time dealing with it. I had very realistic dreams where I would get up in the morning and he would be sitting at the table drinking his coffee just like always. Part of me knew completely that this was a dream, but part of me wanted to believe that he was visiting me in my dreams. I made the mistake of telling a friend and unfortunately news got around the school that I was seeing ghosts everywhere. My girlfriend's friend was absolutely the worst about this and further pushed the rumor that I saw him in a can of Pepsi. Shortly after this rumor started going around my girlfriend and I were having lunch when her awful friend came by drinking a Pepsi and sat down next to us. My girlfriend was also sort of mean to me and I noticed in my peripheral vision that her friend was looking in her Pepsi can and she was laughing. I turned fully to look and she was making a ghost sound and waving the can around. As I got up to leave she took a sip of her soda and immediately started screaming and ran to the nurse's office. It turns out as she was mocking me a wasp had flown onto her can, and as she raised it to her dumb face the wasp stung her on the bottom lip. She never made fun of me again. I like to think mom's bf saw what needed doing and reincarnated himself as a stinging insect just for this. I had been paired with the same group partner in art history three times in a row in college and she never met with me to work on our presentations. Sorority BS excuses. I had to do all the work. I am very ambitious so I do my work well. While she got the exact same A plus grade. I got tired of her crap so on presentation day I memorized the notes for our presentation and only had quotes and pictures on the slideshow. A huge grin crawled across my face when I watched her sputter with a deer in headlights expression. Trying to explain what was on the slide and failing. My professor looked peed, it was awesome. That's the best way to do presentations actually. People then have to listen to you. When you have a presentation where you are essentially reading to your audience, they zone out. But when you are talking and your presentation is reinforcing what you're saying, it is far more entertaining and the audience pays much closer attention to the message you're conveying. A kid I used to work with decided to switch companies after hearing that the one we were working at, that I had invested years in, was on the market. Almost every day since he left he would come in with a smug look asking, How's the company going? My company isn't going to sell. Have you found another place to work yet? Well it turns out the people who stood ground at my company prevented it from being taken over and it actually combined forces with another parent company, still keeping its name, policies, and so on. The one he switched to immediately sold and changed completely around. He didn't stay long. I don't rub it in his face because I saw what happens when you do that. Trod on rake once. It flipped up and blasted me in the face with its handle. Chuck that motherfucker in the furnace. Frick you rake. You can tell that OP got the last laugh because rakes don't laugh. Not me, but one of my best friends from high school. We had this awful physics teacher who was constantly telling us. Friend, me and a couple of others specifically, about how terrible we are at the subject and how we should rather give up on science and opt for commerce instead. Fast forward a year of barely passing the subject. We're writing our final exam in the 12th grade. What's interesting about this exam is that the papers get sent to India for grading rather than the school and teacher, as it's a board exam. It turns out that my friend who was barely passing had topped in the physics exam and this same teacher had to give him a certificate and prize for that at a ceremony. I went along just to see his face. It was totally worth it. I got fired because I was rude to the client. 
In reality, I shut down a troublesome employee of the client who had been harassing my team for months over something that, by his own admission, he had no stake in, and who had been warned multiple times by the client themselves to leave us alone. Also in reality, the company was trying to find an excuse to for me probably because they couldn't skim money off my contract the way they could with the fresh hires. The client snapped me up without even an interview the moment a position opened up. Same people, same workplace, not the rude one, same systems, basically the same job. $13k raise, they tried to sue for breach of contract, but I had made sure all my bases were legally covered. Oh, and my old company lost all their work with this client, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of contracts. I haven't stopped laughing since they fired me. You might want to see a doctor about that. It must be hard to sleep and eat if you're laughing all the time. The biggest bully of my childhood was actually a teacher. I'm not sure why she hated me so much, but she'd often say things like make sure to dress for success. You don't want to look like irrelevant usernum 3 over there. I was poor and had shabby, punkish clothes. Always wore the same black hoodie. But I graduated, got my masters, and make three times as much as her in a great job. I was invited back to the school to talk about my field and give advice about going to college. I gave my talk wearing my old black hoodie. My kindergarten teacher made the whole class sing some song to me calling me a cribby. I still remember all the lyrics. It made me cry harder. Fast forward to high school. I was talking to a junior and somehow what elementary school we went to came up. He said I went to insert school. I said I did too for kindergarten and first grade, but changed schools after. I talked about my kindergarten teacher, whom I forgot what her name was but I remembered how she looked and I described it. So, this junior went to that school from kindergarten to fifth grade, so has a better memory of all of the teachers. Turns out she was fired for many students complaining about how awful she treated some kids, including hitting them, throwing things at them throwing out their snacks, and making fun of them. I'm so glad she can no longer terrorize little kiddos. In one of my agricultural classes we were going around and introducing ourselves and talking about what kind of career we wanted after graduating. A lot of people either said they wanted to be a vet of some sort, or work with the land. When it came to me, I said I wanted to work with ducks and everyone in the class bursted out with laughter. It broke my heart. I know some of that laughter was ha ha loser laughter but my friend disagrees. Jokes on them though, because I just got a fantastic internship taking care of duck populations in the area. I'm already on a good path towards achieving what I want. Enjoy your medical school debt. That would probably make me burst out laughing too. Not maliciously though, it's just a sweet, oddly specific, and unexpected thing to say. Good for you on making it happen. Ducks are so entertaining. I loved keeping them. I was in the military doing my national service duty when we went into the woods for training for the first time. Fifth week of training. So, setting up a camp, doing patrols, fire watch, digging positions, etc. We were away from the main camp for an exercise in guarding a railway bridge. Fellow recruit was gathering some wood for our fireplaces, when one of our higher ups, can't think of his rank, somewhere around sergeant, saw him cut down a small tree. The sergeant tried to be a smartest. Sergeant, what do you think you're doing? Recruit, gathering wood as ordered. Sir, S, per orders, hasso who told you to cut down live trees you're supposed to gather dead wood. Ah, sir, this tree is dead. S, how would you know? Ah, because I am a trained landscape gardener. Sir, S, grumpy as heck. Very well carry on then. Sergeant leaves. We laugh our asses off. After he was sufficiently far away. The sergeant was a pretty nice guy actually. Just took some getting used to. Had a super weird. Big kinda awesome. Sense of humor. The fact that he said carry on and not get mad for refusing an order shows that he is rational and not just an angry commander. I've told this story before. But when I was about 9 years old we had a project at school to write a story. It was kind of a big deal. And I worked super hard on it. I had just passed my I want to be a paleontologist when I grow up stage. And I was firmly in my I want to be a writer stage. So I put a lot of effort in. This thing was pages and pages long. 
I was staying up until way past my bedtime for a week before just to get this thing finished. I poured my little heart and soul into it, because in my mind it was only a matter of time before it caught the eye of some passing book publisher. Shut up, it could happen, and jetted me to fame and fortune and literary celebrity all before I was in double digit ages. We had to hand it in over the Christmas break, and when we got back in January I found out that she had lost it. Worse than that, she was accusing me of not handing it in, even though I very clearly had, and decided to call me out in front of the whole class for being lazy and not doing the work. I ended up spending most of the next class crying in the bathroom because I was so upset. Eventually it turned up after all, no crap it did, and she still only gave me a middling grade for it, as a result of it being handed in late, which it wasn't. The who's laughing now moment, now I write books for a living and I'm happy as a clam doing it, so frick you, Mrs. Harding. This should go right on the dedication page of your next book under to Mrs. Harding. My dad would belittle me regarding my grades, just flat out call me dumb and really make me feel bad about myself when I was growing up, and also comparing me to the daughter of his new wife. Don't have anything against the daughter, wasn't her fault, and how I should act more like her. Now I've gotten a BSc, a MSc and pursuing a PhD, and I have never included him in my acknowledgements or invited him to any of my graduation ceremonies. A part of me is only taking this academic path to prove a point and as a frick you to him. Probably something I should see a therapist about. Even more so it's something you should be proud of as heck. Dang those useless parents who belittle their own kids. The guy that fired me from my first job for no reason now relies on the agency I'm a manager of for referrals. And I've made it known that we refer their last. So, our high school had a dodgeball tournament to close out the year. I had always been in the nerdy group at school and always made a team with a bunch of my band buddies. We were the Pokemon if that gave you any idea on nerdiness. Well, we went and did pretty well in this tournament. In fact, we made it to the championship round. We were going against members of the football team, including the guy that had bullied me from grades 2-8. Nobody really bullied me after that since I grew to 6 feet 6. Anyway, tournament starts. I immediately run and grab a ball and start backpedaling. I throw the ball as hard as I can and it hit my bully in the face. He falls backward a bit, regains his composure and starts laughing at me as headshots don't count. While he is busy laughing I throw another balls and hit him straight in the crotch. It was like out of a movie, except I was so excited that I stopped paying attention. Got hit in the gut and we lost the championship. Look at you living the season 1 sports anime dream. Girlfriend left for another guy over the summer. No warning signs. Just gone. Have since been dating a different girl for the last few months, and things are going quite well. Just this morning, X shows up at 5am because they had a fight, and she had nowhere else to go. Shoot her back out the door and went to work. Best feeling in the world, although my house might be on fire. Final year of Little League. Championship game. I'm playing catcher. We're up by one. Girl known to be kind of a bee, often tried to pick on my specifically, is on third base with no runners behind her. Ball is hit to outfield. I take off my mask and stand with a foot on either side of home plate, leaving plenty of room for her to slide. We are about the same size. I wasn't one of those fattest catchers. Relay gets the ball to me. Ball hits my glove and I have a great grip on it. I look up and notice that she appears to have put her shoulder down and is going to run into me. I widen my stance, lower my center of gravity and put my shoulder down. She somersaults head over heels over me when we collide. I fall over but retain the ball. Umpire calls her out. I get up and see her mom running onto the field to her. She is laying beside the plate. She has a concussion and a broken collarbone. Who's laughing now? B. This is my favorite one. All of these I was successful and my bully is now a loser story is pale in comparison to the B in Little League trying to pull an aggressive B move. He ended up concussed, broken, and most importantly out at home plate. In high school I worked at a restaurant to save money for college. My managers used to tell me everyone says that. Just wait 5 years will go by and you'll still be making breadsticks. Well. Five years did go by and I'm graduating with my masters from a very well known college in my state. They, however, are still managing Olive Garden. I always think about stopping in and letting them know they were wrong. 
but honestly they don't deserve to know. Go back, tell the staff your story, and leave a nice tip. I had this terrible job with a terrible boss. These jobs required college degrees and while this girl had one, she was openly stupid, proudly stupid, offensively stupid. I don't take too kindly to that way of being, so naturally we clashed. I could tell stories of the clashes, but in the interest of brevity you'll just have to take my word for it. And naturally, when layoffs were announced, I was out the door. It was a huge blow and low point, but I got my crap together and within 3 months got a job that was more than double the pay I was receiving at the terrible job. I thrived in the new job. One day about a year into that job we were conducting interviews for new staff. I'm walking back to my desk when who do I see in the waiting area but former terrible boss. We made eye contact. I gave her a look that made her visibly sink into her chair. I said nothing to her. After her interview I told my co-workers as professionally as I could manage why she would be a bad hire. She did not get the job. Had an extremely toxic relationship with my ex-wife who had been cheating on me while I was gone for the military. And who actually told me she was leaving me as soon as we got home from a vacation I paid for. She left and took everything with her and even came after my truck that I had paid off before even meeting her. Since then I've moved up the corporate ladder making really good money for myself and live with my girlfriend who is genuinely the sweetest girl ever. Also helps she is out of my league completely. Make them laugh fellas it works. Anyways, the ex-wife reached out to me a month or so ago looking for sympathy and is now living out of her car. She has been essentially disowned from all her friends and family for sleeping around and stabbing them in the back. I didn't reply. Not that I didn't want to let her know that she deserved everything she got. But mostly because I was on vacation and the mountains and service is just so terrible at the resorts. There was this kid in my grade school named Miguel. Who would bully me all the time about being poor. A nerd. And because I was a bit overweight. This kid was really cruel and could make me feel down even when I felt great. Like when I got my first pair of brand new sneakers that were mine. All of them before were either from the thrift store or hand-me-downs from my cousins. I was so excited to wear them to the school and when I did he comes up to me and says, Nice new, old shoes. I had a pair of those last year. And then he laughs. Made me feel like crap the rest of the day. Fast forward to almost 15 years later. I'm working a pretty great office job in downtown Chicago. I stop by a McDonald's and I see him behind the counter. He doesn't recognize me because I lost weight and had a beard now, but I definitely recognized him. I feel a bit guilty saying it, but it was incredibly satisfying seeing someone that tormented me for years working the register at McDonald's, while I had a much brighter future ahead. The classic revenge arc. English was my second language but I love literature and writing in general. Teacher recommends me for ESL English a second language, which is a dumbed down version where they teach you vocab and grammar instead of normal English course. I argued with him and got it changed. He said you do what you want but enjoy getting that F. I not only got A, I also won the under 18 creative writing competition as a 15 year old and got a scholarship to college. You have been visited by the wealth rat subscribe in 12 seconds and he will share his wealth with you. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.